alkanes are the functional group, or really it's lack of a functional group, that have carbons and hydrogens only. And they're always single bonded to each other. So they're all sp3 hybridized carbons. They're C carbon, CC single bonds and CH single bonds. So it's composed of a mixture of those. Alkanes are from petroleum, so from oils. That's where you find alkanes. Uh, let's see. They have a, a molecular formula of CnH2n plus 2. CnH2n plus 2. So starting with n is 1, going up in the counting numbers. Those are your alkanes. So for example, if I do n and then the formula. If n is 1, we've got CH4. What's that called? This is methane. You got two, that's C2H6, and that's ethane, yeah. If, uh, in our 2A class, we did the simple namings of alkanes. Three is C3H8, uh, that's propane. I've seen propane as a, uh, like gas to fuel houses. If you live up in the sticks, I use propane or butane. Uh, as these get bigger, so as you go down here, as N increases, the boiling point and melting point increase. So boiling point and melting point increase. What kind of intramolecular force would these have? Do they have H bonding? No, because you have to have an H on an electronegative atom, like a <coughs> oxygen or a fluorine. Uh, do these have dipoles? Usually organics don't have dipoles. Not these kind, not the alkanes. They can have it, but uh, not these usually. Okay, so what's left? London. These have what's called London intramolecular forces. And that's why it gets larger, the intramolecular force, or the molar mass gets larger, London forces will get larger. So as you're going down here, uh, for example, uh, methane's a gas, ethane, propane's a gas, butane would be a gas, but when you start to get to pentane and hexane, those become liquids. You go low, higher and higher, and with N, you start to get to solids. Okay, let me show you how to draw these. Uh, it's a little practice in drawing. Let's do propane as our example. Propane, C3H8. We have the expanded, expanded drawing. This is also essentially your Lewis structure. So Lewis or expanded are the same thing. And so you would draw it like this. Here's our Lewis structure. Remember they all have, carbons have four bonds. They're all single, so I'm drawing them all like that with H's on the outside. So there's the expanded, your Lewis structure. You can have a condensed. Condensed. And the reason I'm showing you this is that most all books use all of these. So you just want to get used to identifying uh, structures. Condensed will look like this. CH3, when you write the hydrogens, just write next to the carbon instead of all spread out. Or uh, it could look, you might not even draw uh, those bonds in between the carbons. So either way is a condensed when you bring the hydrogens in. Uh, you can have the skeleton. That's a skeleton is where we say, OK, Everybody knows that carbon has hydrogens on it. Everybody knows that carbon has four bonds. So why are we wasting our time drawing the hydrogens? You already know they're there, even if we don't draw them. So you already know that you see one bond here, so there's three bonds missing with three hydrogens. You see two bonds here, so there's two bonds missing with hydrogen, etc. So. The hydrogens are there, we're just not drawing them to save ink and save the environment. 
So that was the uh, skeleton. We could draw the bond line, or, or just called line diagram, bond line or just line. And that's where we're like, why waste our time drawing the carbons? We know they're there. So don't waste ink drawing the carbons. So it looks just like this. Each point, or kind of where lines meet, is a carbon. There's a carbon on both ends and in the middle. And you count the bonds, and that helps you figure out how many hydrogens you need to add as well. So again, here, hydrogens and carbons are not drawn. That's as uh, simplified as it gets. And then there's the 3D, uh, which is where you put the tetrahedral shape or the trigonal plane or whatever the shape is, you put it in there. So in this case, they're all tetrahedral. So what I do is just try your best to draw that template in of two that are in the plane and two that come out of, in and out of the plane. And you'll need to know how to draw these. So get used to the template. Notice I repeated that tetrahedral template three times and then add in the hydrogens. Okay. That's the three D's. You're most often going to see this one, the bond line. That's going to be the one I'll use the most, the book likes to use it the most, we save the most ink doing that. You'll see this one occasionally when we do uh, chirality, the chirality section. And then the ones up top, depending on how, how your text wants to draw it. Okay? So be familiar with all of these uh, different types, ways of drawing. 